$200 per shell, full cost. Non-destructive device, non-destructive launcher. There's a huge DIY community. The launcher's about 400, 700 bucks, okay? So now our challenges. <laughs> Lots of them. So uh, I'm sure you all saw the hand. Uh, first consideration is always safety and followed very, very closely behind being legality. None of us want to go to federal prison. <laughs> Next. Uh, camera arming. Once you stick the battery pack in there, the camera goes live. Uh, if you want to have a decent amount of actual shelf life on the camera, six months, eight months, however long it takes. Uh, temperature. Uh, when the round is actually fired out of the launcher, uh, the low pressure chamber uh, gets to between 900 and 1100 degrees centigrade. Uh, things tend to melt, crack. Uh, G-forces, if you're hitting anywhere between three and nine G uh, when the system is fired, uh, things tend to disintegrate, including many Arduino controllers. Space. This is the amount of space we have to work with, including the lift charge, parachute, safety wiring, camera, battery pack. And of course, camera orientation. So it's not fun. Basically try to take everything you want and then <laughs> squash it down. It ain't easy. So irrespective of the arming, which Vlad talked about a minute ago, uh, there's all sorts of ways to do it. There's all sorts of challenges for this. Vlad, talk about this for just a second. So uh, if you look at the Firefly system, and it seems like fins are definitely the great way to go. Uh, Trying to get fins to pop up reliably out of 37 millimeter launch is the challenge we're still working on. Uh, we've bent a lot of sheet metal. Uh, helicopter recovery, very unconducive for stable video. Basically, helicopter recovery is when the thing, you, you get a parachute skewy and it starts going like this, which makes it really, really tough to get usable video. And of course, we aren't even going to mess with uh, spin stabilization. Uh, basically, we're trying to stabilize either something the size of this film canister or this baby soda bottle uh, long enough to capture 480 by 680 uh, video. Okay. This was another challenge. You get cheap cameras. Where are you going to get them? Where are you going to get them? Really cheap cameras. Where is that? China. Okay, call China. That's fun. That's so much fun. I spent a lot of sleepless nights calling China because of the time difference and the language difference. I had a Mandarin to English dictionary and Google Translate, and I still couldn't get past hello. It was a bitch. But we managed. We got cameras. I have cameras right here. This is a full camera system with a 5.8 gigahertz analog wireless system in the camera. That's it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay. Then wire it, because you see this connector? The connector for getting the battery or the, or the wall wart hooked up to it took up too much space. So I cut the cord, because you know, it's DC, two wires, right? No, four. By the way, if you polarize them wrong, get the wrong polarity, you blow the camera. That's an expensive trial and error. <laughs> so we had some problems. So, okay, so we get through this, piece by piece by piece. I've actually got emails into the factory for the next round of problems. Testing issues, safety, <laughs> talk to the hand. By the way, where do you test grenade launchers? Does anybody here have a grenade launcher testing range? Oh, I actually saw a hand go up, Jesus, okay. <laughs> I did not expect that. <laughs> I swear to God, I really didn't, I'm impressed. All right, so then there's the shell loading. So this is actually constructing the whole system, okay? Uh, Vlad? He's going to talk about the shell loading. You might have noticed, I've been handling electronics. Vlad's been handling the things that go bang. So the way we load this is actually very simple and very innovative. Uh, we got somebody who does custom CNC machining and does allow 37 and 40 millimeter loading. You start out with the base of the shell that fully disassembles, and we insert a small pistol primer. And then we fill this little area uh, with the actual propellant. Uh, in this case, about six grains of unique. Uh, we, then, we then install a burst disk right up there. 
And what that burst disk does is it actually lets the high pressure chamber build up 25,000 psi during ignition. What's a burst disk made of? Pennies. It, that is actually a penny squished by a 20-ton press. I just find that amusing. I don't know why. Uh, once the burst disk pops, it will add, the gases will actually expel through these holes and drop the pressure down from 25,000 psi to 900 psi. Uh, which is what's actually going to push the, the wadding out through the shell, uh, prevent everything from catching fire and cracking, and boost, uh, boost the parachute and the payload out through the rest of the shell. Okay. So, it worked! No. Uh, <laughs> that picture on the lower left is uh, me and Vlad, decked in proper protective gear, firing our test shell. You notice the camera is actually sticking out the end of the launcher. That's the problem with space. You see the, camera, the picture on the lower right? That's one of the camera systems in a baby soda bottle. Now this is a baby soda bottle. For those who don't know, that is a two liter soda bottle before they blow it out in the mold with hot air, okay? They're great. They cost like 50 cents to a dollar, depending on how many you get and where you get them. Uh, they are tam vaguely tamper evident. Dear God, I'm not gonna say tamper evident here. Somebody will laugh at me. Because uh, you can put the cap on, it has the ring that separates, uh, and they're really, really waterproof and good. So we cut holes in them and put the cameras in there, used tin foil to wad it, and then since I had the problems with the connectors, my CR-123 battery packs were basically fitting in there, but not fitting really well. So they were longer than we expected. We dealt with it. We managed. But failure is always an option. Okay, you can always have problems. You can always have issues. You can always have... You know, details. Trees and buildings jump in the way. I love that. Okay, I'm not going to bother showing this video. We actually did get about 150 meter range out of these little tiny cameras with an antenna about an eighth of an inch long. It's pretty amazing, okay? But here's what I am going to show you. It's about 20 seconds. This is us on a farm in an unnamed location, which shall not be named. Basically, going, crap, why is it not working? <laughs> we actually had some issues with primers. Notice the incredibly safe distance I'm standing. <laughs> yeah, um... Aren't you glad he was wearing his helmet? We actually got... Uh, about 30 feet. Now, one of our problems was literally not us. The sealed powder that we used to hand load the shell with, we're like, why is there powder spilling out of the shell afterwards? It literally didn't burn. So we took a, a lump of it and put it on the ground on a rock and lit a match to it. And uh, it's like, poke it with a stick. Come on. Didn't work. Powder was bad. And so the 30 feet we got is just the primer alone, a small pistol primer pushing the charge out. Which, for a tiny little, like literally smaller than the tip of a, a, a you know, small than a pencil eraser, isn't bad. Okay? When we get the powder to work right, we literally did this, by the way, the Saturday before DEF CON. <laughs> we started this whole project three months ago, just so you know. This is version 0.01. .01. You can see that on the right. Um, we do expect to honestly get that far, about 400 meters up. Considering a pistol primer got at 30 feet, it's not bad. Um, now, the only other problem is that... By the way, this is from the camera. And that's about the best video you get. <laughs> oh no, I'm being loaded. <laughs> okay. The video feed from the, the small flight didn't work. We found out that these cameras are susceptible to motion. They're designed for surveillance, where they're going to be standing, you know, like, like mounted or on somebody's person. So they're designed to be moved at human speed, not bang speed. <laughs> Minor issue. Um, but what we figure is when they actually get up in the air, so we're, we're figuring on deployment, we're not gonna get any video. But once they hang from the parachute, they're gonna be descending at a much slower rate. We should be getting usable video from them. So we're not actually worried about that, okay? So, yeah, we failed. <laughs> we blew up battery packs. We had primers actually drop out of the shells and, and like get caught in the damn launcher. That was not fun. It's not working. What do we do? We're like, oh crap, that's an extra part not supposed to be there. 
I know that happens during most of your assembly required projects, but it wasn't something we were happy about. We burned the fireproof parachute, or fire resistant parachute. Yeah, that wasn't fun. We're like, oh, let's just try it again. We look at the parachute, we're like, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Nah, never mind. So, basically, we failed. We failed our first prototype, but we got a lot of information, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. We're going to do better with our next one. So, if you want to keep all your fingers, ask some questions. Good question. Um, SWAT teams and airsoft teams carry 37 millimeter launchers now. We wanted a system that they already owned for cost so they didn't have to buy a new launcher system and so they didn't have to retrain on a new system. It was like basically uh, modding what you already own is a lot easier than buying new crap because, you know, is your significant other going to let you buy new stuff? We already know you're on a budget, dude. Uh, no, we actually ran with it, which made us look like total idiots. <laughs> uh, and at any human speed, you're good. Okay, except when you whip around with arm outstretched, because that actually increases the velocity rapidly. But, would you say that? I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, when the system actually fires during the boost phase, you're not going to be getting good video. During the descent phase, you're only coming down about 25 uh, feet per second, which is more than usable. And since the receiver module records everything to SD card, you can review it and play it back as slow as you want to. More questions? Yes. Uh, yes, we actually got a note from that from the building manager. Something, <laughs> ab something about something crawling from the 14th floor. Yeah, we, we got in trouble. Yeah. What about uh, three man swing shot or bow and arrow? Okay. Respect, but remember that we're talking about systems that they already own. We don't want to make them buy a new launcher. Now, the one question we did get, by the way, uh, was that we talked to three or four SWAT teams, and they asked us, can you duct tape the camera module without a shell to a rope? Yeah, of course, why? Because when they do a high angle rescue, they want to drop it down with the rope in a waterproof, airtight package and see where the rope is going. So we actually have interest in the camera module alone without the shell, because it's kind of interesting. Yes? Dude, we're talking about a camera that's so tiny, you know, you, you could put it up your nose. I mean... Okay, that's going to be version 5. Can I work on version 1? Uh, so, yes, I actually started out in uh, high power model rocketry years and years ago. The problem is uh, most walking guys don't do high power model rocketry. They don't have the equipment. Uh, there's also failure to ignite and all sorts of engine issues. Uh, also with high power model rockets, you need to call in launches to the FAA. You need to actually have valid permits for high power model rocketry versus they already own a 37 millimeter or 40 millimeter launcher. They pop the shell in, they're good to go. Absolutely no problem. We intend on open sourcing the design. Um, in, in, again, in the spirit of the make community. We intend on open sourcing the design with the picture of the hand on the front cover. Uh, those are, I believe, solid copper pennies, but again, just under a 20 ton press. Any, any copper, it's just, they're, they're nicely, neatly provided in little discs. It's great. Are you a treasury agent? <laughs> Fed! <laughs> yes, sir. I don't have $2,000 to spend on one of their projectiles, so no. Um. Uh, so, uh, one other issue is uh, their system is actually a 40 millimeter launcher, so they're not constrained by it not being a destructive device. They're using significantly more than six grains of powder. And if there's incidental